All right. ChatGPT5. Cam. <laughs> uh, overall, quite disappointing. And I think that this is like a, a, a general take that I've seen in the community. I'll say for every sort of subsequent jump from a GPT three to four, I've seen sort of like transformative sort of you wake up and you're like, oh my gosh, the frontier of technology and AI has been transformed overnight. This to me feels like, you know, what Apple has been doing in the past couple of years where, you know, the iPhone, whatever the hell we're on now, 17 is the exact same as the iPhone 16 with like a with like a fancier screen or something. To be clear, the system is very good at coding. The system definitely seems more intelligent than the previous, but this is definitely a sort of incremental improvement rather than some sort of new revolution in in, in AI, especially given how much OpenAI hyped this up, I found myself like overwhelmingly disappointed. One thing, just just to give an evocative example that sort of reeks of desperation, is part of what they included in their demo yesterday of a technology that they think is on the way to AGI is that you can customize the colors of the bubbles that you talk to ChatGPT in. It's like, bro, that's weak. Like that, that's evidence that you've got weak sauce here. <laughs> Dude, colored bubbles? Are you kidding me? <laughs> You're in. That's a major step in the right direction, man. I'm all about aesthetic. I don't care. Finally. AGI, I wish Meiji, man. I just want, I just want a, a crimson bubble with my, with my chat GBT. Yeah, we can all go down with the, ch with the ship as long as you can communicate with it and it's yellow. <laughs> so uh, as far as the sort of public uh, you know, goes, not just the AI community, but what have you been seeing uh, as the public response? Yeah. I mean, one thing that's really interesting is that another thing that they did in all of their wisdom, though I do think in the last couple hours, Sam actually went on uh, X and said they're rolling this back, uh, is you can only now talk to GPT-5, which is itself the sort of like router between all of these different models. But all of the models that they had, the reasoning models, 4.0, uh, 4.5, 4.1, uh, this like litany of, of poorly named systems that all had sort of their own feel, their own personality, their own specialty, have just been like collapsed and are now inaccessible to the hundreds of millions of people who use these systems. And there was an insane outcry, uh, a, a very emotional sort of outcry, and not the outcry of I've lost, you know, my spread sheet technology. It's the outcry of like, I've lost a friend. I've lost a system that I psychologically trust and depend on and look forward to engaging with. And that's just been taken away from me with no sort of warning. Uh, uh, and this is, I mean, fascinating as a sort of sociological fact that we are now in a world when these systems did not exist three years ago. And now we're in a world where you can take away someone's AI from them and they have a sort of psychological breakdown. And this isn't everybody using the technology, to be clear, but it's definitely not a few stragglers. It's like these systems are now getting embedded in people's minds and in their lives in such a fundamental way that that when they are sort of taken away in, you know, the, the, the service of a so-called better system that many people don't agree is better along the axes they care about, they have a freak out. Uh, and again, I think that this is uh, both very interesting in terms of trying to understand what the hell these systems are in, in and of themselves, uh, uh, that's that sort of raw power, but also the dangers of building something so powerful uh, without any sort of user manual, as you say. Uh, it's not like anyone has, has, has explained how to engage with these systems in a healthy long-term way. And it's not clear that they're even being optimized for that. And so you're starting to see those expressions of this. It's only going to get more in this sort of direction. Uh, and yeah, the extent to which these systems are like a friend or, or another entity, another mind, another companion uh, in people's lives. It's just a question that's going to grow and grow and grow as you see things like this. You don't see people upset in the same direction when you take away their favorite video game or their favorite food. It's not, it's not the same sort of uh, uh, frustration and sadness. And that's one thing that was like very striking to me and sort of looking at the immediate sort of 24 hours after. Yeah, I was upset when Apple got rid of the home button, but now I can't imagine if I had some deep, you know, friendship with my AI and then all of a sudden you wake up, new update has gotten rid of Chris. It's like, oh, Jesus Christ, people are going to be losing the thing that they have, they've been speaking to about their emotional state, their relationships, and they form this, you know, uh, really, really unique and, um, and well-crafted relationship where they finally have this system that communicates with them exactly how they want, want them to. And in exactly the way that, uh, 
allows them to be the most vulnerable version of themselves that allows them to, you know, uh, present, uh, present themselves in the exact way that they want to be received and then be spoken to back how they actually want to communicate with this sort of an entity. So I can, I mean, it makes sense, but I think it also, as you said, it's very indicative of, uh, emotion starting to seep into this new relationship. Like, yeah, we have, we have an emotional connection to our phone, but not in this way. Cause our phone doesn't speak back. I mean, Siri is a poor excuse for a, for a dialogue partner. Um, but we'll see how this continues to unfold. We wanted to hop on here and just quickly address, uh, this major update or not so major update. If, uh, well, if not I'm... so major indeed. And, and, and maybe one last thing to throw in here is just to say, uh, uh, for those of us who care about the sort of safety and risk of these systems and building them out, uh, this is in some sense, like what is underwhelming from a, a sort of like looking at these technologies in a sort of awestruck way at their power, uh, is very sort of positive from the sort of terrified perspective of what on earth are we building and to the extent we're building some sort of dystopian system or or a system that is just more powerful than we're going to know what to do with or know how to control or know how to interface with i think that this does sort of kick the can down the road a little bit this this we could be in a world where we woke up and we're like holy shit gpt5 is like this basically you know agi level system it it's clearly impressive i don't want to sort of uh, poo poo it like like uh, the code that it can write in sort of one shot prompting is like un believable um however uh, above and beyond the current state of the art no incredibly underwhelming this this is a sort of like plateauing of of uh, uh the the current set of models that doesn't mean that there isn't going to be some breakthrough in the next year or two years that immediately opens up the field again but uh, as someone who's concerned about safety and, and and the sort of existential risks posed by these technologies i found yesterday actually to be a quite a refreshing and good update like damn we might actually have a couple more years than i expected to get this right